Okay, in the last lesson, you should have learned how to set Python up, and we left off at the point where we had a very basic Python script written, and we were able to execute it. So in this lesson, we're going to work on learning how to load mass spectrometry data into Python. And so I've opened up an example spectrum in Qual Browser here. This is a, a piece of thermal raw data. Of course, you can do this with other types of file formats, and there's other things you can do. Um, there are ways that you can load things like um, raw files into Python directly without having to convert them. Um, there are also ways that you can load in MZML files, and we'll talk about those later. But today we're just going to do something very basic. We're going to right-click, export it, and we're going to copy it to the clipboard. We're going to open up Notepad, and we're going to paste in our spectrum. We're going to save it. Just put it on the desktop. Um, and then we're going to now try and open this with Python. So let me close all of this out. Let's create a new file in here. And we'll call it um, File Plotter. Because we're eventually going to want to plot this. So um, the first thing we're going to need to do is um, we're going to want to set our file path. And so let's go ahead and take a look you can see, if we look at our desktop, I'll drag the thing over here. One thing we can do is right click this and do copy as path. And then we can go in here and say path equals paste. And in Windows computers, you need to add an extra slash here because they use a slightly different slash notation. So that's our um, file that we want to load. And now we need a way to actually load that file. And um, this is where you know, we could do this with very basic Python, um, but basic Python is going to be a little bit tedious. And really the advantage of using Python is that we have lots of different libraries that we can load and that we can use to do things like loading and manipulating and plotting data. Um, so here we're going to use a library called NumPy. And the way that we install NumPy is pretty simple. We're just going to open up a terminal and we're going to say um, where pip uh, actually, that's not going to work. I'm going to go back here to the Python packages. Uh, so normally, you can just open up a terminal and type pip install. So we would type like pip install numpy and just hit enter and that would work. But because I have multiple versions of Python on my computer, that's a little bit um, confusing. So I'm going to go over here and just say add package. Um, oh, sorry, let's do um, numpy. I'll search for that. Um, yes, it found NumPy. We can just go ahead and click install package. And what this is doing in the background is it's running pip install NumPy. Um, and so while that's installing, I'll just leave that going and I'll maybe walk through. Oh, there we go. We got it. Um, what we need to do to run NumPy is that we need to import it. And so we add a, a sentence here. We say import NumPy. And we're going to say as NP. Um, and basically what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to import it, but it's going to call it as NP rather than writing NumPy the whole time. Um, and so now let's, uh, we have NumPy imported, we have our path, let's try loading our data. And to do that, we're going to do, um, we'll say data equals NumPy. That allows us to call out NumPy as a library. And we'll say load text, load txt. And from there, we can then give it the path name. And uh, let's go ahead and just try this and see what happens. Run file plotter. Okay, so one of the problems is that NumPy is going to try and convert it into like a grid array. And if we go back and we look at our spectrum, you can see there's all this extra stuff that we get out of the thermo, right? Um, so one way we could do it is we could delete this, right, and just get rid of these columns. Or sorry, get rid of these rows. Um, but let's. There's actually a better workaround. So let's just quickly count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows that we don't want. So what we can do is we can go back and in our load text function we can say um, skip rows, and you can see um, PyCharm kind of knows that that's an option. Uh, it'll detect and kind of allow these sort of auto completion, and we'll say eight. Skip rows equals eight. So let's run it now. And you can see it finished without any errors. So what it's done is we've, again, imported the NumPy library. We've set our path as our text file. And then we've run the load text function to import the data 
and it's saved it now as a variable called data. Now, um, let's go ahead and do print data, and this will allow us to now see what that data looks like. So you can see here we have um, what's called an array. Um, so basically what we have is a, a series of data points, and within each of those data points we have our x data and our y data. And the x data is, of course, m over z. The y data is, of course, intensity. Um, now, there's a variety of different ways that we can access this data. So, for example, let's say we wanted to look at the first data point. We could say um, print data, and then we put a bracket to indicate that we want to index it, and we could say zero. Uh, now, here's uh, a little bit of interesting coding trivia. Um, so, you know, you're probably used to counting starting with one. So you start one, two, three, four. Uh, so the first data point you would think would be data one, right? Um, but with uh, a lot of computer programs, and Python is like this, there's zero indexed, meaning that um, the first data point is actually zero. And so by saying data bracket zero, what we're saying is go through the array and grab the zero element, meaning the first element in that. So let's go ahead and run that file plotter now. And you can see we have uh, the m over z here, which is 14,084, and the intensity, which is zero, right? So we could go through and say, let's grab the 100th, sorry, uh, the 100th data point, sorry, uh, run that. And you can see now we've got one that's a little later, it's got a little bit of intensity. We could say, grab the 1,000th data point, right? And it would do that. Um, we could say, grab the last data point, which is minus one, right? And you can see that's now at 15,000, all the way at the end. There's other things that we can do. For example, if we wanted to grab all of the X data, we could put a colon, or sorry, if we wanted to grab all the data, we would put a colon, right? So this is just all of the data. Uh, the colon just means take everything. Um, what we could also do is then put a comma, and then that'll go another level of depth. So if we could say colon comma zero, what that's doing is basically saying take all of the data, but take only the first column, the zeroth column. So let's take a look at what that looks like. See how that's just now all of the m over z values? We stripped out the intensity. If we, instead of saying colon comma zero, we say colon comma one, what do you think that's going to do? That will strip out just the intensity values. And of course, it's only printing a few of them, but it's getting all of them. And so there's a lot of different ways that we can parse and slice this data. So we could say, for example, if we wanted to take um, different ranges, so we might want to say, let's take the 10th data point through the 100th data point. We could do that. If we run that, we can see now we have these like 90 data points starting with number 10 and going through number 100. We could, of course, then take only the intensities for those, which would give us this list here. Um, and of course, we could also do this, we could say, let's maybe take the 10th through the 100th data point, but take only every 10 steps. That would be 10 colon 100 colon 10. And that's going to do something like this. So you can see it's now skipping every, it's only collecting every 10 data points. Um, so this is basically how we import and install a library, um, how we load a text file, and how we can then access that text file in different arrays. And we can come back and, and go through a lot of these things in more depth. Mostly I'm trying to like go in more of a functional project-based way and really just go through like one thing after another. So um, well, let's start thinking in that direction. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is plot data, which will be a separate video. Um, but let's basically, let's set the X as data bracket comma zero, uh, colon comma zero, which is basically saying take all of the, you know, again, just that first row we'll say y equals data bracket one. And so then if we do print x, you can see the x data, print y, it'll do the y data. Let's take a look at that just to make sure. There we go. So this is all the x data, this is all the y data. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to plot this, which is of course what we want to do now.